let's also address two things that's very close to india and karnataka for that matter after chief minister basavraj bombay took over uh, there's been a coordinated pattern of attacks or at least media reports um, which suggests that there is a rising hindutva force in karnataka that is helbent on among other things uh, um, love jihad as well um, so what is love jihad is it an actual thing because i think during the anti conversion law protest i saw the christian community and uh, archbishop peter machado clearly stating that there is nothing called as the love jihad and this is just some uh, very poor phraseology used by the right wing to garner hindu votes and communalize the society okay there is no love jihad i agree with all of them okay we will assume for a moment there is no love jihad and uh, i will not concede however i will assume my problem is not with marriage is not with two people of different communities different castes getting married and please let me tell them that uh, this society this society that they say is regressive and this and that and all that enacted the special marriage act in 1956 which allowed people of two different uh, practicing faiths or two different castes or two different whatever else societies come together right my problem is when you have to convert to get married my problem is not marriage i will presume that it is the most divine love ever better than any rama and sita any romeo and juliet these are two people who can't live without each other and you know uh, they will go to the moon once they are get, once they get married my problem is why should the girl convert okay what happens when the girl converts has anyone gone into those i want all the feminists to listen to me and tell me if i'm right or wrong whether they are agreement or in agreement or not see in every case of love jihad where is the problem the problem is when the girl who is going to school or college is converted into islam and then that person marries her correct or not what is love jihad love jihad is that right using islam or jihad you know to trap a girl right at least that's how we understand it so there you have it what happens when the girl, well, my fundamental question is why should the girl convert why can't they both get married under special marriage act where is the problem they don't do that why do they convert and once they convert what happens to the girl's rights my concern is there right i'm concerned about the girl right the girl could be christian i am surprised that some archbishops archbishops spoke in karnataka if you ask me the community that is suffering more than hindus in kerala is christians where they are losing their girl children okay now so the church has spoken is, about it in kerala yeah. the kerala church is up in arms with the government against this because they have lost more girls than hindus okay what happens in all these cases i'll just give you some, what, what is personal law in india personal law is marriage right a hindu has a different way of getting married and different laws to govern it the muslim has different the christian has different so on and so forth the next one is succession i'll just try and simplify law as much as i can the next is succession that is inheritance my dad has a property or my grandfather has something how do i inherit it okay these are the two fundamental uh, laws that that are personal to every community hindu muslim christian etc what happens when a christian or a hindu girl converts to islam first and foremost if i am a hindu or a christian and my husband when i am living and not divorced there is another woman i will simply book him under 494 ipc for bigamy i will put him behind bars i'll say how dare you marry another woman when i am around can you do it in islam the man himself is empowered with four marriages me three of them after me two before me one after me or whichever in whatever combination he wants to do it polygamy is allowed in india polygamy is allowed Stop for it. muslims in india so yeah. there i lose my right first right to what said what nonsense you cannot desert a woman like this and uh, the law was simply uh, enacted following the judgment now so that is mm-hmm. that take still remain one talaq still remains where the man so the, the supreme court ba- banned this uh, triple talaq and mm-hmm. uh, i won't go into the details of all of that subsequently there was a legislation which was also a, opposed uh, quite uh, vigorously by the opposition parties 
especially by the Muslim Personal Law Board and so on and so forth. However, the government felt it only right to correct the wrong that Rajiv Gandhi was responsible for in 1986. Yeah. So the Congress Party, with a uh, you know view or the agenda to appease, you know, because they are controlling the Muslim man's vote, and uh, you know they believe that the man is going to go and tell his wife what to do and what not to do. Today that has changed. The women, Muslim women in U UP, vote for Yogi. Yeah. Yeah. Because they have been protected by this uh, triple talaq law. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I was speaking of what is lost by the uh, you know non-Muslim woman when she enters Islam. So I am looking at it purely from a gender point of view. So mm -hmm. your your polygamy is your problem. Talaq happens again. This fellow can say talaq to you. It's not that he can't ever right. The husband can. And there is a there is another way of doing it, which is they have an iddat period of 90 days and so on and so on. She should not be pregnant and all of that. But talaq remains. Only triple talaq is gone. So there you have it. Now, when it comes to succession, I'm not saying it was all hunky-dory in the past for the Hindus also, right? The, but the Hindu, today the average Hindu woman gets an equal right. What matters is today what the law is, as it stands, right? Uh, in the 90s and uh, post-2000 also, there were many, many uh, judgments that came from the Supreme Court. What which ensure the, the wife gets her equal right in property. But in Islam, you know what happens? If there is no child, she gets one fourth. Otherwise, she gets one eighth. It's an equal right everywhere else. You understand? And, uh, you know, like I said, talaq is such a skewed subject. We won't go into it. It's not easy for the woman. Yeah. So why socially you're going to suffer? You have to wear a burqa. Right? right? Yeah. Your education might suffer. I don't know. There may be some great... Uh, to, uh, to you know help you or not all of them will take you to ISIS. Huh? Some of them may help you pursue your studies also. Right. <laughs> I'm just saying, I don't want to make any sweeping generalizations. But, yeah. uh, you know, you can't enter a mosque. Correct. Except Sabri Mala, you can go to every temple. You can't enter a mosque. So these are your social laws. About any, any company, you know, these are all fine. As long as the love is pure. Right. If you ask me, everything is fine. And if the love is indeed pure, there should not be any conversion. Go ahead, get married to whoever you love. Right. Marry under the Special Marriage Act. Hmm. Why conversion? Right. And have you seen, you know, the name of, I, I don't know whether I can say these names. Hmm. Saif Ali Khan's son is Taimur. He's not Ramchandra. Somewhere, why does the woman give up the right to name her child? I don't know. You know, Amir Khan's son is some again some Islamic name, although the wife is Christian, uh, the wife is Hindu. So, yeah. why does the woman give up all this? My question is that all for love, is it great? Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content, and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad, Namaskar.